Um, in my day job, so Street Mutts is my passion project, uh, but I have a day job that pays the bills and I work in analytics. Um, so a lot of the things that we've been do talking about in here, data, that's something I'm doing in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, most of that time has been spent in marketing and in advertising, so I spent a lot of time seeing what decisions people are making. Uh, the more I've gotten into animal welfare, the more I've started focusing on why are people making these decisions and how are they coming to the conclusions that they're coming to. Um, there's a lot of reasons that we should care about the process. And I think most of us in here um, you know, are really committed to moving animal welfare forward and have to deal with people in that process. And at some point, we're going to try and convince somebody or try and um, get somebody to make a decision. And we need to, whether we like it or not, understand where they're coming from. And we need to understand the process so we can better help them make the right decisions. Um, so the session's a little bit more general, but I think that you'll be able to take some like tactical things away. And there's a worksheet um, link at the end of this, so you can take it and apply it in your, in your practice. Um, first of all, decision making is a limited resource. I'm sure all of us have had the experience where you've had a really busy day at work, your brain has been on all day, you come home and somebody says, what do you want for dinner? And you're like, I don't care. Like, I can't even make that decision of what I want right now because I've thought too much all day. So what's happening is we're getting tired. And as we start to get tired, we start to make poor decisions. And in some cases, we can end up making no decision. And I'm going to say this happens to everyone. This is my dog. This is a picture of him. His name is Ninja. Um, I dropped him off at the vet before I left for boarding. Uh, Ninja is currently in kidney failure. Um, and I'm going to talk through the seven stages of decision making and how it applied to my life um, in regards to Ninja and how I ended up becoming completely paralyzed in making decisions. Um, and then kind of walk through a little bit how we can help people avoid the paralyzing choices um, and instead come to making the right choices. So before we get there, um, decision-making criteria, we can more or less break these things down into functional and emotional components. Um, the functional component of wanting to treat my dog in kidney failure is that I am responsible for him, and I would like him to stop urinating in my house. That's the very practical reason for, for making these decisions for my dog. The emotional reason is that I really love my dog. I've had him for 13 years. I don't like him since you know, seeing him being sick, I want him to be healthy. Um, we're going to focus a little bit more on like the personal emotional reasons as we talk through these um, decision making stages. So every decision generally falls into seven different stages. Um, this is, you know, as laid out by social scientists, we may not realize and actively notice the stages that we are moving through, but generally we are. We're identifying a problem, otherwise we're not making a decision if we don't even know a problem exists. We're gathering information, seeing what else is out there. We have to weigh the evidence, make a decision, implement the action, and then evaluate the results. So for me, I found out my dog had a disease. That's, that's the problem. What the heck does that mean? I don't know how to interpret these blood results. What does that mean? What can I do for him? Unfortunately, as I'm sure many of us in here know, there are many different conflicting um, recommendations when it comes to caring for your animals. So I had one vet recommendation tell me he should be on a certain food, and this is how we should treat him. And then I had other people tell me he should be on this food, and this is how we should treat him. And if you ask three other people, you'd get three other answers on what's the best way to treat my dog. So the truth is, as I tried to weigh the evidence, I sat for two weeks researching everything I could online, couldn't find anything that actually gave me the answer that I wanted. And finally, I just decided I'm going to buy the food that my vet sells because it's there and that's what I can access. Is it the best solution? No, but I had to make a solution because waiting any longer would have been a detriment to my animal. So made the decision, implemented the action. Again, I purchased the food that was accessible to me, that was easy. The vet was there in person. I you know, administer sub-Q fluids. And these are all things I can get locally at my veterinarian's office. 
evaluating the results. This is pretty simple, but you know, follow-up testing, home monitoring, how is he improving both anecdotally and, and follow-up blood work. But there's a few problems for me in the process. One, apparently my dog started exhibiting signs of kidney disease back in January, and my vet never told me, and I didn't find out until May or June when another vet reviewed his results. So identifying the problem was a big point of frustration in hindsight. I could have been helping him since January, and that wasn't even clear. Gathering information. I think a lot of us tend to give information as though we are authoritative and we have all the information, but we may not always explain context for everyone. And if you're anything like me, and we're all in this room talking about data, like we want to see the data, we want to understand what you're recommending. Um, my vet, other than saying, here's, here's some food, this is what we recommend, I had no idea why. I had to go research why. And of course, in researching, I found out all these other information. So what could have been done? A vet could have given me a very clear recommendation. Here's what we recommend. And as much as we don't like to talk about it, sometimes sharing what other people are doing, whether you agree with it or not, is going to help somebody make the right decision because I'm going to go online and find that information anyway, whether you give it to me or not. And if it comes from you, from my veterinarian, you can at least give me the accurate, unbiased information versus what I find online. So I, again, was finding all this conflicting information. If somebody had handed me information saying, here's the 10 different things you're going to see, here's how they're going to impact your dog, the data that supports what we're recommending, it would have been very, very simple for me to make a choice at that point. And again, implementing the action, how they can support it, make treatment and information easy to access. Again, my veterinarian thankfully had the information there for me, um, and I was able to access you know, the, um, the food there, um, but it wasn't so easy if I had wanted to make another choice. Um, in some cases, I have a, you know, at one vet's office, I can pick up certain supplements, and at the other vet's office, I can pick up the food, and that makes it very complicated when we put multiple steps on people. And lastly, evaluating results. What are we doing to, to come up with a follow-up plan? So as we're thinking through how we can help support people, we're going to need to think through each of these stages and what can we do to support the decision maker at each of those stages. I have, um, and I'll, I'll share the link, but it, I have a sample worksheet that goes through vaccination. When it, even when it comes to something as simple as vaccinating your animal, it is imperative, in my opinion, um, to share all the information. Here are the, here are the risks with vaccinating your animal, but it, here are the benefits that far outweigh your risks. If we give all the information to the people making the decisions, they're going to have much less friction in making that choice, and they're going to also trust you. When my veterinarian gives me good information, but also tells me about the risks, I know I can trust what they're saying, and I know I'm going into this decision um, knowing all the information. If I found out later that there was a risk associated and I hadn't been told about it, that might cause um, some hesitancy to believe what my veterinarian was saying the next time around. If you go to my website, there's a link up here, there's a worksheet that gives you sample questions that we want to put ourselves in the mind of people at each of those stages. Because if we can, if we can start thinking, what are people thinking at this stage, we can start providing the answers to that. And in my experience, what most of us could really benefit from doing is making information more clear, more accessible. And that could be everything from you know, putting contact information on your website. That could be, here's the hours, here's how to access um, you know, the, the vaccine clinics. Um, and of course, this is going to differ for each region. Not everybody cares about websites. Um, but there's a lot of different things that we can start to provide as a resource when we start really thinking through all the questions that people are asking at each of those stages. So if you go there, there's a sample worksheet and then there's a blank one that you can print out and, and use for yourself. So I'm like rushed right through that, but I hope that um, 
it was somewhat interesting for all of you. I don't know that there's any questions, but um, yeah, I'd be happy to chat or shoot me an email later. <laughs>